Hey, you know what? There's another name you might know me by. Star Lord. Who? Hello, this is Ken. I like making things. I like making things out of paper, and I like making things cooler. Especially my figures. Sometimes figures don't look all that screen accurate. All they need is a bit of touch up here and there to unleash the hidden potential. I also love using everyday tools and materials to recreate iconic scenes from my figures, so they can shine on my display. Subscribe to my channel and join my DIY adventure as I ask myself the same question every week. Can I make it? Last week, I made a little display for my mini posters. I love that they have a home now and I can display them anywhere I want. Check it out if you're interested. With Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 coming out soon, I thought it would be fun to do something with my other Star Lord figures. I've already worked on the one from Love and Thunder. That one was interesting. I originally got this one because I wanted the Star Lord for my Infinity War display. A display that I said I was gonna make years ago. But then I realized Star Lord didn't wear a long coat there. So that wouldn't work. So I then got this one. I do like the look of this one more. It just looks more Star Lordy to me. But this one only comes with a helmeted head. But I think I can combine the two and get the Star Lord I want. But that head's just a bit off. Let's, Let's deconstruct, deconstruct this, this figure. figure. There's an FAQ on the paint and brushes I use in the description box below. I do like how Starlet looks with a long coat, but I don't think it translates well in figure form. There are two things that I don't love. The scarf is a bit of a distraction. It is grabbing my attention whenever I'm looking at it. The two studs on the side of his hips stick out too much, distorting the coat in an unflattering way. That said, the coat is actually very nicely done. There's this nice gradient effect on it. The face though. It seems like Hasbro never got Chris Pratt's likeness right until now. I can sort of see Chris Pratt here, but those eyes are so cartoonish. It makes him look more like a cartoon or comic version rather than his MCU self. The other figure has an overall better silhouette, and those two studs on his hips are actually functional. The only thing I need to do is make the colors less flat. All the colors have this rubbery look to them. The helmeted head's actually really cool. I thought I wouldn't like this head much, but it's growing on me. I still prefer the helmeted head with the long coat and the unmasked one with the other one. The goal today is to make these two look somewhat like Chris Pratt. Even if it turns out a bit like the Love and Thunder one would be great. Even though that one wasn't that good to begin with. So, can I make it? Let's start with this one. I'm gonna work on the pants first, so let me remove some of the garments. Oh, that instantly looks so much better with the scarf out of the way. Alright, let me remove the coat too. When I look at photos of Star Lord from Volume 2, there are a lot of promotional images depicting him with reddish or purplish pants. I personally think it clashes too much with the jacket. I prefer the pants to be dark brown, like how they look in these shots. So let's see. Hmm, this brown isn't dark enough. I'm gonna use this other brown instead. This dark brown is almost identical to the original pants color, but it has a warmer tone to it. I don't mind it, so let me apply it all over the pants. This will also mattify the pants in the process too. Now I'm gonna paint the tongues of the boots with the lighter brown from earlier. This will add more depth to the boots, bringing out the molded details that are hard to see. And just a quick layer of the same brown on the belt to give it that leathery look. And let me add more shading to the pants to give it more dimension. Alright, the legs are pretty much done. On to the coat. The coat is great. I like the dark red, and the gradient effect near the bottom. The only main thing missing are the two darker patches under the shoulder pads. So let me rub a bit of the dark brown over them. Oh, it's a pretty good match. Nice. Okay, let me add a bit more of this brown to highlight some of the details on the jacket to make this awesome jacket even better. 
I'm just so glad they didn't use that orange red here and actually gave it realistic looking colors. Alright, I think I'm done with this body. Let me put the scarf back on and see how it looks. Mm, I still don't like it. I'm gonna shove it to the sides to reveal the shirt more. Ah, there, perfect. Oh, almost forgot. There's this silver pin on the front side of the coat. And there's also this silver little thing on the sleeve. And since I got silver on my brush, I'm gonna paint the straps and buckles too. Okay, next. Mmm, this one looks a bit more toy-like in my opinion. The colors lack depth. The boots bother me the most, so I'm gonna fix those first. This bluish dark grey looks a bit cheap in my opinion. I'm gonna add a layer of dark brown over them to make them look more natural. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the tongues. And a bit of shading to the pants again. On to the jacket. I'm gonna make the darker areas even darker with the dark brown. I really like how the jacket looks here. I'm also going to add a thin layer of brown over the texture areas too. So the jacket looks less basic. Alright, the jacket isn't exactly screen accurate, but it's close. I'm gonna try and match it as much as possible. There's actually only one shoulder pad on his right shoulder. So let me see if I can cover up the left shoulder pad with red paint so it matches the sleeve. Hmm, while I'm at it, why not just go over the entire jacket with the red? Maybe I can make it look more vibrant. Oh great, now it's looking a bit too warm. Let me cool it down with a bit of purple. I like using purple or blue to darken the color red. It looks a bit off at first. But once the purple dries, it's gonna look much more natural than using black. And to finish it off, I'll add a thin layer of glossy varnish over the jacket to give it that leathery shine. For the final touches, I'm gonna add a thin thin layer of gold onto the buttons on the jacket. Faint enough where they aren't noticeable at a glance, but just enough to add some realism. It is time to work on the heads. Let's start with the easier of the two. I didn't like this helmet in the movie because Star-Lord can't really emote with this on. But I think this translates really well as a figure or toy. It looks very cool. Let me see if I can make the hair look better by adding a bit of highlights and shadows. I don't think that did much. Alright, on to the helmet. I wanted to have a metallic sheen, so I mixed black and silver to get this dark gunmetal color and I'm gonna apply it all over the helmet. The only missing paint I see are these silver details at the bottom of the helmet. Oh, I think the mouthpiece is supposed to be darker too. I kinda like it silver, so I'm only gonna darken it slightly. Just a couple more silver accents here and there. And let me see if I can make the eyes brighter. Alright, let's see. Ah, the changes are subtle, but the details pop quite a bit more now. I love it. Okay, on to the face. This is interesting. This reminds me of the Marvel Legends before they started using the face printing tech. The facial features look drawn on, especially the eyes. But I can see Chris Pratt especially at an angle, so I think there's hope. Let me first do a base layer to kind of cover up the brows and the lashes. I considered using acetone to remove the eyes and the brows, but I think I'm better at modifying what's already there. It's like having a guide. It's also way less intimidating. I never really paid attention, but what's Peter's eye color? Google said they're green, but I see photos of him with brown eyes too. I'm gonna go with green, and I'm gonna work on it off camera. I need to have as much precision as possible. The pupils are now green, but it doesn't look too natural. Let me try and add more life to them. Alright, 
the pupils look more realistic now. I also covered up the brows a bit more so I can redo them. Can't forget the facial hair. Okay, I'm not gonna touch the face anymore. I think this is probably the best I can do to the face. Let me finish this by adding more shading to the hair. Alright, here's the finished head. I still think it looks a bit odd straight on, but I can totally see Chris Pratt now. This is so awesome. Before I put the head back on, I also worked on the cassette player. This was very difficult to paint, it is so tiny. Not the best paint job, but it looks good enough for me. Here's the finished figure. Ooh, the cassette player doesn't look that bad. I didn't do too much to this long coat. It was pretty good to begin with. But that scarf is such a distraction. It looks so much better tucked to the sides. Here's a closer look. The painted version looks so much cooler. The before version kinda looks like it's about to build a snowman. And the after version looks like he's about to save the galaxy. Here's Starler with his helmet. Oh wow. I love how the jacket turned out. Oh, I now see the problem with the boots. They kinda had this rain boots look before. Now they look more like leathery boots. What I love is that because the helmet is the shiniest part of the figure, it now pulls the attention up to his face. I love how the jacket looks now. I can almost feel and smell the leather. And for fun, here are the three Star Lords have done so far. Mmm, does this head look more like Chris Pratt than the Love and Thunder one? I can't tell anymore. And this is the Star Lord that I wanted in the first place. This is how I picture the MCU Star Lord in my head. And I think it's similar enough to the Infinity War version. So I can probably use this in a variety of displays. Do you like what I've done? Let me know down below. And here's the helmeted head with the long coat. This looks pretty cool too. The helmet fits the long coat really well. Speaking of the long coat, the issue I have is that he just looks odd in the neutral standing pose due to the way the arms hang and how the hips stick out a bit. It's not the most appealing stance, but other than that, I do appreciate the paint job they did on the coat. I also love how the cassette player sits on the belt. It's such a Peter Quill thing. The helmeted head grows on me more and more. It goes so well with his guns. Although I don't like the little studs on the other body, I love that the double has gun holsters. I love it when figures have some sort of way to store their weapons. The other good thing about this Star Lord is that the neutral pose looks much better here. And with that smirk, I can make Star Lord do these Star Lordy poses too. Ah, I love this Star Lord. I wasn't a big fan of the Star Lord figures because they never seemed to capture Chris Pratt's likeness. But I am very happy with this one. It's even better than the Love and Thunder one. And I thought that one looked more like Chris. Not anymore. The Love and Thunder one's giving me Uncanny Valley vibes now. He looks so weird. What do you think? Which one looks more like Chris Pratt? Okay, I know they finally nailed Chris's likeness on the Volume 3 figure. I'll get to that soon. I wanted to work on these Star Lords first. They deserve another chance. Let's end this for the photo shoot. Starting with this combination. Ah, this Scream Star Lord. It kinda reminds me of the video game version too. The helmeted head has a bit of mystique to the character, but I like seeing the face. What I don't like is the arms can't go any closer to the body. It is such an awkward pose. But, fortunately, he looks great when I pose the arms as if it's adjusting the coat. Now the shape of the coat looks more natural. And it has a bit of a windswept feel to it too. My favorite part of this figure is the cassette player. The blue just pops so nicely against the red. That said, this body is still limiting when it comes to poses. 
It doesn't help that his fingers are super stiff. I wasn't able to get him to hold his guns without breaking my nails. But it's okay. This one can be weaponless. Because this one looks amazing with the weapons. I can't picture this body without weapons. It just makes sense. And the unmasked head looks much better on this body too. They actually did a great job with the sculpt. That smirk looks very natural and is very well done. It was just a paint job that was off. I really do see Chris Pratt here now. I wonder what happened. Because Gamora from the same wave is perfect. And she's a green alien. How did they mess up Chris's face? I believe the face printing tech had already been used by then. With the right paint job, this could have been the best Star Lord figure. This look works for Volume 1, Volume 2, Infinity War, and Endgame. I can see myself putting this in any of those displays. Alright, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll get to the Volume 3 figures soon. I still have another Guardian I want to work on first before I get to the newer figures. Give this video a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Thank you for watching my video. Your support is greatly appreciated. And as always, stay inspired and I'll see you next week. I can make it, so can you.